All right, we're calling the meeting of order. It's 7.01 p.m. Let's take a roll call. Um, Zechariah, are you here? Zechariah is here. All right, um, Julie? Here. Chris? Here. And Linda, is Linda here? No, Linda. Uh, Mark? Present. All right, Ron? Yes, awesome. present. Cool. All right, we are here and we're starting the board meeting for um, all of our guests, um, community members. Uh, before we get started, I just wanna <clears throat> remind everybody that this is just a informational meeting regarding the rate study. As you know, we had one back in February and it was presented and it showed us the numbers that would need to get us um, fully solvent um, as far as no deficit. Um, we would be able to pay our bills and everything would be good to go. And those um, amounts were astronomical. So it um, caused us to all realize that, you know, we're, we're, in, a, we're in a pickle. And so our rate study uh, group has been um, coming up with a different possibility for us to look at. And they're gonna be presenting that tonight. This again is just informational. It's for the board for us to um, hear and understand. And then um, the board will take this up at another meeting where we actually get down to figuring out numbers and everything that we want to do um, and vote on it. But it will not be happening tonight. So I just wanna make that clear so nobody um, leaves the meeting saying the rates are going up or anything like that. This is just information for the board and for you and questions will be um, allowed at the end of the presentation. So Rick, I'm gonna toss this over to you and Gabe and you guys take it away and share the screen if you need to. Excellent, I'll do just that. So good evening, I'm Rick Simonson, Senior Vice President with HFNH and I have with me Gabe Sasser, associate, uh, Senior Associate with HFNH. As Matthew said, we've been working uh, with the team uh, for now over a year and we did come forth earlier this year with, as Matthew stated, some astronomical rate increases uh, to become fully solvent. So we went back to the drawing board to see what could we do that may be more palatable. So I'm going to walk through some of uh, the analysis here tonight, uh, why we're here. Uh, really, as Matt said, we're not here to set rates. This is informational only. Give a little background for those that may not be familiar with what the current rates are and the rate structure and how much revenue is being generated by those rates. And then look at your expenses. What are the revenue requirements? What do you need to cover with those rates? We'll come forth with a, a new proposed rate structure. And we always get asked, well, how do we compare to others? Uh, so we've prepared some bill comparisons to some other like uh, districts that may on the smaller side or, or nearby neighbors. Then we'll open it up for full questions and discussion. So first and foremost, here we are just here to inform you, the board and the public about the rate study. Again, we're not asking to adopt rates tonight. We'll present some of our analysis and then elicit the feedback. So a little background, what are the current rates? Primarily, we're just residential, very, uh, little commercial uh, customers being the district office or the fire station, but primarily it's the residential rates. And you have a fixed monthly charge without uh, regard to the first drop of water of $100.69. That's the base bill. And then for each unit of water, which is 750 gallons used, our residents are charged $1.49. Now, when we looked at this rate structure, uh, we noticed that a lot of the revenue is coming from the fixed charge, about 78%, 84% of the residential revenues are from the fixed charge, and that's a nice, stable revenue source. Unfortunately, as has been pointed out, that stable revenue source just isn't enough to uh, reach all the expenses. So we do know that the current revenues are not meeting the cost of service. And Therefore, since you're not meeting your basic uh, operating expenses, the rates don't allow for any con contributions to operating or capital reserves in case of emergencies, uh, capital repairs that may be necessary 
uh, on that rainy day. So what do the current rates generate in revenue? About 931,000. We just put together this slide here in our model to understand where revenues are coming from. And primarily, of course, it's all uh, mostly residential. And then the HOAs, the common areas and the COA uh, does generate some additional revenues. But what I want to point out here on this slide, um, in years past when we looked at this, uh, there is golf course revenue, and that's highlighted there in green, and also vineyard revenues for watering the vineyards. Uh, that's no longer the case. Uh, that was about 200,000 units per year uh, times uh, about the four and five dollar rates. That's about eight to nine hundred thousand dollars per year. That's no longer coming in. So your rates from the residential uh, services are coming in about 931,000 at current rates. How does that compare to expenses? Well, this graph here illustrates quite drastically the black bar is about that million dollars coming in, 931 coming in from uh, the rates. Uh, unfortunately, the stacked bars here are all the different cost components, the most significant being water purchases there in red at the bottom. The 931,000 isn't even covering the water purchases. So there's been this gap over the years and it's been subsidized in recent years. Uh, that is becoming more difficult to do. So we've been asked to analyze your rate structure and prepare some uh, rate proposal that may be a little more palatable than trying to bridge this entire gap all at once. Little more detail on the costs. I won't go into too much detail, but the model does start uh, when we started this process. We had the 1920 budget, but it's been escalated over the years uh, with the help of staff uh, to approximate your revenue requirement here for fiscal year 21 22, in which we just started this past July 1, which means we need to generate about 3.5 million. Uh, you may notice here on uh, about the fifth row down equipment loan repayment. Some good news is that is about to be paid off, saving about $430,000 a year in expenses. However, we're still in 21-22. That last payment still needs to be made. We did start with the total district-wide budget, which does include sanitary sewer and storm sewer services as well. So we backed those out because we're only setting water rates. We need to cover through the water rates just the expenses associated with providing that water to the residents. And again, one nice thing is equipment loan will be paid off here shortly. So here's our most recent proposal. Uh, on the left-hand side, changing the residential rate from about $100 fixed per month to about 135, so about a 30%, 35% increase. In the past, to fully bridge the gap, that was more than $300 per month. So we're just trying to incrementally get us there. Also introducing a tiered rate structure. Currently you have a uniform rate structure where every drop of water is charged the same. But we do know there's additional burdens placed on the system for those that peak and require additional water. Therefore, you can tier your rates. Uh, and that is a methodology that's used uh, around the country based on the AWWA M1 manual, which is the American Water Works Association. And it gives guidelines for setting rates. And the state of California with Prop 218 requires pricing out your tiers if you're going to have tiers. So we've done just that. On the right hand side, we give a little detail of how we came up with the breakpoints. These weren't arbitrary. Uh, what Prop 218 says in the courts have said you must cost these out and uh, base any breakpoints based on your particular jurisdiction's water use characteristics. So we did just that. We looked at 2019 use. We felt 2020 use because of COVID isn't really represent, representing a normal year for the district. So we looked at 2019 and only analyzed those residents that had 12 months worth of use. As we know, uh, there's been additional uh, parcels brought online uh, during the year. So we wanted a full 12 months. And what we look at is first, what's the winter water use to set the first break point? And that's typically during the winter months of February and March, the lowest two months. And for 
that period, it's about six units or 750 gallons per unit, which is 4,500 gallons for the month or use of about 150 gallons per day to set that first break point. And that's at six units. Currently, we've costed out that tier and it's $1.88 for water used from zero to six units. Tier two, uh, based on the uh, methodology prescribed in the M1 manual, which is a base extra capacity, uh, that says tier two's breakpoint should be at the average water use. So we just looked at the full year divided by 12 months. So the average water use of residents is 13 units per month, which is about 325 gallons per day. So that includes some irrigation um, all year round. Tier three, the breakpoint, uh, the system uh, capacity for max day demand. You need to build a system bigger than what you need on an average day because you do have those spikes during the year. And that's set at one and a half times uh, tier two. So 20 units uh, per month, which is about 500 gallons per day. Again, uh, Roughly two or three people per household should be using 100 to 150 gallons per day indoor. So that allows for quite a bit of irrigation. Then the last tier is anything above that 20, 20 units, which is more than 500 gallons per day. So these break points weren't arbitrary. It's based on the district's water use patterns. We've costed out the tiers there. So tier one would be charged $1.88 from zero to six units. Tier two, $2.57 for their block of uh, water use units, increasing up to $5.42 for anything above 20 units of use during a month. And of course your monthly usage changes during the year. So during the winter months, you may find yourself just in tier one, maybe getting into tier two. During the summer, many properties may be getting into that tier four due to irrigation. So these rates here, again, are not designed to bridge the entire gap. So the annual projected revenue at these proposed rates, we'll just have a quick summary here, will generate about 409,000 from the volumetric charges, then increasing the service charge, the fixed monthly charge from $100 to 135 per month will raise uh, will generate 952,000. So a total from the residential uh, parcels, 1,361,000. Add to that the non-residential, the COA, the HOA, common areas, an additional 52,000. So total revenues with these proposed rates would be about 1.4 million. And that's still far shy of 3.5 million needed to fully fund the operation. So there's still a subsidy uh, of some magnitude occurring, even with these rate increases. So again, these proposed rates do not eliminate the shortfall entirely. It reduces it by about 480,000 um, compared to the 931,000 you would generate at current rates. So how does that impact bills? We put together this slide. Um, during your low use water months here at the top, we've compared if you use 50% of average, so about six and a half units of water, uh, we'll see a, a bill increase of about $37 for that month. An average water use month, if you use that 13 units, you see an increase of about $44 during that month. With high water and very high water uses, you get into the tiers, you can see the monthly impact increases for those higher water use months. So again, it depends on which month, um, in order to understand the bill impact. Again, during the winter months, you'll tend to be in the lower water or average water use. During the summer months, the higher water use. So it will impact each customer differently and differently during the year. Have your water rates compared to neighboring jurisdictions? Not surprising. Um, some of the larger cities in your area, Tracy, Modesto, of course, they'd be on the low end uh, and we've shown this at both an average water use and a high water use bill. Some of the smaller communities, Oakwood Lake, Golden Hills, Mountain House were closer to your size. Um, and I know Mountain House has the same issue. The last time we checked in with them, they were subsidizing some of their water rates as well. Uh, and they tend to be on the higher end as well. So average water use, uh, you do still, even with the current 
rates at about $120 a month, increasing those uh, with these proposed rates to about 164. So again, staying on the high end of the neighboring jurisdictions. When we look at the high water use bill, still on the high end, as you can see, Golden Hills Community Services District uh, its rate structure uh, shows that they're getting closer to the Western Hills rates that we're showing as, as they have high water use tiered rates as well. So with that, I know that was a lot of information uh, that did build on the last time we presented. And again, I think the takeaway here is the rate uh, structure that we're proposing here is not to bridge the entire gap, but start making an in incremental uh, impact to that uh, overriding uh, shortfall that you've been experiencing over the last four or five years. So with that, I'll open it up, or if Matt, you have a, anything to uh, to say to, to bring the discussion back around? Does anybody have any questions from the community? Maybe we can um, unshare the screen so I can see more of the folks in our group. Excellent. There we go. So if anybody um, has a question, go ahead and put up their hand. If anybody from the board has some questions. <clears throat> Wow, this is a, this is different than uh, February. <laughs> uh, uh, Chris, hey Matt, <clears throat> I noticed the um, commercial rate was four dollars and change in the new proposed um, schedule, but I think the prior rate was higher than that. Is that is there a change in that rate? Sorry, the current rate, I should say. You mean for the commercial? Yeah. Yes. I think we were trying to keep it the same, right, Rick? No, based on the cost of service analysis and how we allocate costs between the commercial and the residential, that rate came down slightly, yes. Got it. Okay, cool. Just wanted to verify. Thanks. Anybody else? Nobody from the board has any questions. You know, we all have to discuss this um, possibly next month. So, and uh, Rick and Gabe probably will not be with us. So if you have any questions, this is the time to ask our water consultants. Um, and just so um, everyone understands the, the rate study, the way it works is by law um, for any public utility company to raise rates you have to have a rate study. And most utility companies or public utility companies, um, three to five years, right, Rick? They do rate studies approximately. And what it does is it allows us to raise rates. So they're the ones that put it all together and say there's a need to raise a rate. Um, so we can't arbitrarily just raise rates. There, there's a, a process and that's what the rate study is. So the February rate study was that uh, uniform rate study where we had a base rate and a, a water rate for however much water we use. This is more of a tiered structure. And so we now have these two studies that the board is going to talk about and discuss at an upcoming meeting. And we have to decide what is the best way to go for our community and so input is really important. And if you guys have questions for uh, Rick or Gabe, now's the time for the board to ask those questions because they will not be coming back. Um, they've completed their portion of, of, of this. I have a question real quick. Go ahead, Julie. Hi, the, uh, could we go over really quick again? You had uh, said that this is not going to cover all of the shortfall. Uh, we're just trying to, I guess you're trying to put a dent in that, but you mentioned the equipment loan repayment. Um, is that one of the reasons for this also? Um, because that's coming up for, for payoff. 
Right. When the generators are paid off and the vehicles are paid off, um, I think that was what about four hundred thirty thousand dollars. Then that That's will true. come down. That then that deficit will will also come down. <clears throat> that is correct. And remember the rates here that they're using is based on our eight thousand acre foot contract. And so, <clears throat> as the folks know, we are in negotiations with that. And though we have no information on what that new contract will look like yet, um, that will also bring our deficit down once we have an actual real number for the acre footage that, you know, however this contract works itself out to be. So this number, remember the study isn't, it is about numbers, but it's also about the study in itself of how we, if, if the board chooses at a later date to go with the tier structure, we have to have a rate study that breaks down that tier structure. If we decide to go with the uniform structure, then we have to have a rate study that shows that because legally we have to be able to show that we are able to do either or. So once we have a better understanding of where our, our acre footage is going to be and stuff, then we'll be able to plug those numbers in. Either way, we're still going to have a deficit. Um, even with the proposal that we're working on with, with KCWA and stuff, there's still going to be a deficit. So we're way within our bound, you know, we're way within, um, we're not going to have to worry about having another rate study, put it that way. We'll be able to plug in numbers and it'll work. Okay. And so I see see that um, also the the average of about four hundred ninety seven thousand dollars that's not considered in this rate study Is yeah that the water banking pardon i'm sorry Joe, i couldn't hear you but the what are you referring to the four hundred ninety seven thousand was that the water banking the, revenue the water banking revenue the average water banking revenue that offset the cost of water in the contract that's the That's last not, page. Yeah, last page. It's not being considered in these rates at all. That is correct. Correct. So that is correct. So on slide eight, you see the even with these rate increases, uh, there's still about a two point one million dollar deficit. Uh, and that's for twenty one twenty two. Um, we you know, we looked at you know, next year, the following year, if you could renegotiate the, the water agreement as well as the leases coming off. So about 430,000 of the leases coming off still leaves you about $1.7 million short. Uh, your current water expenses are about 1.3 million. So, even, and we know you, you gotta pay something for water. So we still know with these proposed rates and a renegotiation of the water agreement, which would drastically reduce your water uh, purchases and not have a, uh, the banking revenue as well. It would just be much cheaper overall. Taking all that into consideration, this is still just making a dent in the shortfall and there will still be a remaining shortfall that needs to be dealt with in future years. Oh, okay, so, that, so obviously this doesn't include any, any golf course revenue at all. It doesn't right. include the water banking revenue that was previously. Um, Rick, do you want to explain um, yeah. slide thirteen? Because you 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 didn't you stopped with the Q and A, but slide thirteen talks about how how to handle the water banking revenue. Do you want to yeah. maybe kind of explain that a little bit? Yeah, that was included in the the last uh, presentation we made. Uh, and we put this at the end, only if there were questions, uh, we were gonna refer to it. So under the, you know, I'm not the expert on your agreement for the water purchases, but what we've included in the revenue requirement is that initial uh, purchase of, that you have to make each year. Then depending on the conditions in your allotment, you may get some monies uh, for the water baking revenues you've seen over the years. It's not a guarantee, so we built the rates and the revenue requirement, assuming no water banking revenue. So worst case scenario. Any other questions? 
did that make sense, Julie, or do you still have questions? Yeah, no, I, no. I, I, I want to okay. make sure everybody everybody understands it also because this is under the obviously with no revenue. This still does have some very little commercial um, in it, but uh, are we looking at if if there were a golf course? Um, that would be more revenue to us because we would sell water. Yeah, but I'm. You trying to figure out how that would impact the actual numbers, Julie? Yeah, I guess I somehow trying, added in yeah. that golf course revenue. But there's, there's, yeah, I mean, in other words, that rate, obviously we were a little conflicted right with that with that actual rate but i think this was in the previous rate study that we looked at that so this new uh, analysis is really looking at a short-term rate of what we know uh, so this is intended for the to go into effect you know as soon as you can go through the process of a hearing and getting the board to approve it uh, but not looking out at some of the unknowns. Once a golf course comes on board, you have additional revenues, you may be able to reduce your rate. And But once that happens, that's the time to revisit with the model, what's the appropriate rates from that point forward. If you can reduce them, you don't have to go through the protest hearing process, you can just reduce, reduce your rates. Them. Right. Any other questions? All right. Ron, do you have anything? No, okay. Mark, um, as our treasurer, is, is everything okay with you? Do you need to have any specifics from these guys um, to help because one of the things that the board's going to probably rely heavy on is, um, as you know, we're working with KCWA on new contract and everything. Um, you're involved in that. And um, is there anything you need clarified or clarification for from the um, Rick or Gabe? So as we're continuing in that process, you'll be able to plug in some numbers. Um, is everything, do you, any questions you have? I've already analyzed these numbers to death over the past 10 years. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> what Rick has to say is pretty right on. I, I can maybe elaborate a little bit more as far as golf course, potential golf course revenue and water banking revenue. As far as golf course revenue, if two courses were up and running historically, that brought in close to a million dollars a year in golf course revenue. If one course was up and running historically, that brought up to $600,000 a year in golf course revenue. But as we know, based on the presentation I gave in March, the uh, the charges for golf course water has, you know, has gone up significantly over the past 10 years. So take that in consideration also. The second point uh, with water banking, um, when I look at the numbers, uh, there was only two out of the past 10 years that we received revenue from water banking. And I think one year was uh, about $600,000. And I think the other year was about $200,000. But don't hold me to that exact number because I, I can't remember specifically. But as I recall, it was two out of the 10 years where we did receive uh, water for, from the water banking program. So that's one thing I can really add to it at this point in time. But other than that, I understand the numbers specifically and what Rick is saying is pretty much spot on. Um, the only way we're gonna be able to make up as far as getting the district into the black is to figure out a way to uh, reduce um, our uh, water that we pay from Kern County, get the, the arrearages paid up, and then also uh, taking consideration that we've been borrowing money from the Belarus bond that will need to be paid back at some point in time also. But for now, we're hemorrhaging 
and uh, we can't keep going down this track unless we do something here to uh, you know kind of shore up our finances and um, I can I'm very nervous about if we just don't do anything what's going to happen in the short term right I think we all agree with you so just for the community to know the um, the um, process that we are in with Kern as well as the city of Patterson is continuing to go. Um, we're doing all we can. Um, we are in negotiations and um, I feel confident that we will get through this process. And um, it's it's slow. Um, I, I, I wish bureaucracy didn't exist, but it does. And uh, we're doing everything we can. Um, when we have more firmer understanding of the things and we can report it, we will. But right now we're just in that negotiation process. And um, we have our consultants, Julie, uh, Mark and myself and our attorney um, are constantly working on this every day, <laughs> every week. Uh, and it's, you know, it's going. And that's all I can really say. I can't give out really any, any information, but I feel confident that we are going to, um, we're going to get to a much better deal than we're in right now. And uh, for our situation, the deal that we have is actually a good deal if we had build out and if um, our developers were building and doing what they need to do. Um, unfortunately, because of that, the deal is not a good deal. And we're trying to make a better one for our circumstance and situation. So we're doing what we can. Um, but as Mark said, um, we are going to have to, as a board, come together possibly next month um, and really work on these numbers that are going to fit into one of these structures. And we are going to have to move forward on this because, you know, this isn't a tourniquet, but it's definitely bandage and gauze to stop the bleeding or at least slow the bleeding. You know, a, a, a tourniquet would have been, <laughs> would have been the February um, <laughs> proposal, um, and none of us can do that. And so, you know, we're just going to have to, um, as a board, come together. And, you know, I've talked to individual board members at times, and I've just said, look, my biggest thing is unity and to try to bring something across the table that we can all agree with. Um, I hate having things go across with just a majority vote and having dissent. I, I really would like all of us board members to try to work together on coming up with a consensus of what's gonna work good for the community and what's gonna work good for the district. Uh, and, and for us to really come together with, with a unified idea of how we can um, stop the bleeding. I think that's really important right now. And, and Mark really spoke it well just now of his concern that the bleeding is really bad and it is. And so we're gonna have to come together as a community, um, as a board, and we're really gonna have to um, you know, roll our sleeves up and really work on numbers that are gonna work for us that you know, won't be challenged because that's the difficulty. You know, Passing this, we don't want a 218 challenge. So it can't be too high, but if it's too low, then it really isn't helping. You know, we're still gonna be bleeding out really bad. So we're gonna to have to put our thinking caps on and, you know, I encourage us board members to just start looking at these proposal that has been done by Rick and Gabe and um, start getting your thoughts together because there's a board meeting coming that we're gonna to have to really decide and figure this out. Um, we, we really don't have time to push this down the road much further. And, and part of the reason is, is because think about it with the challenge and everything, it takes what about 90 days, Rick, to get this over the finish line and actually see our first bill. Right. Um, it's not something where the board votes today and then in, a, in 30 days or in two weeks, we start getting the revenue. There's a whole process and that process can take about 90 days, I think. So, you know, if we were to pass something in October, you know, you're looking probably in January before we actually start seeing any finances coming in. If we wait till November, you're looking at February. You know, if you wait till December, you're looking into the spring. 
and I'm, I, I really don't know if, if we can handle that um, much longer. And I think Mark, again, summed that up really well, of the concern. So anyway, again, one last time, any questions? because um, I wanna thank Rick and Gabe for all their hard work. They've been working with us for a year on this. And this is pretty much their final moment with us for this, this go around. So now's the time for any questions or anything. These are the guys. Matt, I'd like to say two things, if it's okay. Um, Absolutely. Uh, the first thing is I am currently working on the audited financial statement and report, and that's being done by an accountant firm. It's independent auditor, and I invite the community when that gets released here, hopefully soon, to review that very carefully. And the second thing is if anybody in the community has any questions as far as the finances, feel free to give me a call. I'm happy to disclose to you, you know, what the numbers actually are in detail. So I invite anybody to reach out to me, just call the district office and leave a message. Yep, thank you very much. That is, we promise transparency and that's what we're, we're trying to do. Okay, well, um, that is it for this meeting. Uh, the next um, regular meeting is gonna be Wednesday, October 13th, 2021. We may be discussing this um, for the actual official increase. We might push this to November. I just don't know yet. Um, a lot also stems from these negotiations that we're having, um, trying to get a little bit more of a feel of where we're going to be. Um, but again, it's, it's one of those scary things, guys, where we keep pushing it down the road and it's getting scarier and scarier and Mark's losing sleep. I know Julie's losing sleep. I'm definitely not getting any sleep. And uh, we have to, we have to get, we, we just have to come together and we're going to have to deal with this. So with that said, everybody, keep your board in your prayers and we will see you guys October 13th. And thank you for showing up tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Gabe. Thank you, Rick, for hanging in with us for a year. Uh, I know it's been difficult, but thank you so much. It's really appreciated. Great group to work with. We appreciate uh, your involvement. So thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Thank and we'll see you guys um, in October. Hey, Matt. Yes, sir. Do we need a motion to adjourn? Oh, yeah. Duh. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so hungry. I'm forgetting. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Good night, everybody. Good night.